Welcome to our Major City po Program this afternoon. Our uh, guest speaker is Phil Seabird, and he'll be doing something different than we usually do. He'll be taking us around the house on just the first floor and talking to us about some of the um, decor in each of the rooms. And he's a perfect person to do it because he has over 30 years of experience working with antiques and as a, a assessor of antiques. Is that the word? Appraiser. 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 Appraiser of antiques. And he has been on the board of Turner Dodge since 1999 and worked for many years with us and served on our restoration committee and, and uh, has been very supportive of the work here at Turner Dodge and we're really happy he's here. And then I would like to add also that next month our program will be at noon on the first Thursday of the month at, and we'll serve uh, some punch and you can bring a sandwich if you'd like. And we'll be hearing Lucille Bielan, and she'll be talking about some of her memories from her early years on the council. Thank you. We're going to do something a little different, which will require you kind of moving around from room to room. And I want to talk about some of the actual things that are in the house. Earlier programs have talked about the Turner family and the Dodge family, and some times the exterior architecture and a little bit about the interior. Our restoration has returned the house basically to the second period when it was totally rebuilt in around 1900. That's why I want to show these pictures here which, some, which explain really how the house developed. This is the original view of the Greek Revival House from the 1850s, which was the central section here and then two side wings. It was a central hall, meaning there was the entrance hall, which is still here, that went directly through the house and out the back to the riverfront. In around 1900, Darius Moon, a local architect, was commissioned to completely rebuild the house. He added on a new front portico. He added up onto a third floor. He built the second story wings and he added other areas on all sides of the house. So there's a 1850 house, which has been circled by the later 1900 building of the house. The uh, evidence of that can be sh seen in some of the woodwork and the designing. This part that we are in now was the original front parlor, and then the back parlor was back here, which became the library. But these were originally front parlors and back parlors. The original style of the house was Greek revival of 1840s, 1850s, going back to the classical times. Roughly 50 years later, the Greek revival was recycled in terms of being a colonial revival. So you see the same type of things, but on a little different scale and a little different uh, composition, like the ionic columns, the porticos, and all the, the details of the house. This was the, as I said, this was the original front parlor, and there was a different, completely different stairway that went up that way, but when the house was redone in 1900, the stairway was changed, and probably the walls were altered slightly too. Now, the few things that I want to show you in here, one of the major pieces that we have been uh, able to acquire, which was donated by Judge Allen, was the uh, corner piece here which came out of the original Allen House in Kalamazoo, Michigan of about 1885. It's a hallway piece. You put your coats and hats and umbrellas in it, and this was dated. The original one is about 1885. This house, when it was uh, restored again, the latest time was brought back to the period of 1900. This is why it does not really look like a typical Victorian house, because the colors are quite They were thoroughly researched. The uh, colors that were used, the designs that were used, the wallpaper, this type of thing is quite different from the earlier period. Other things I want to show you just briefly, the Saruk rug, we have acquired this for the house a few years ago. This is slightly later in period, probably 1930, but many of these rooms did have oriental rugs and the natural wood floors. Other things that are in this room are the 
mirror between the two uh, windows. Also the artwork here, which is a Victorian pastel. The uh, table over there is a library table of about the same time, about 1900, 1910. That shows the same type of columns and features on it that this extra that, the, uh, that the room has. Yeah. Okay, go on go into the what had been the parlor and now and was redone into the library. I want to show just one or two things in there. The three chandeliers that are in here are matching. They are have been made of old pieces. The centerpieces are antiques. The arms were reconstructed and added, but they are three matching ones, the two in the entrance hall and the one in the library, they all match. They have the same style of solid brass. Originally, the chandeliers in here would probably have been gas lighting and then electric, and sometimes they were a combination of the two. But we have uh, added these to give it more authentic look. Now, in here, this is the uh, library. This is a fireplace that was added at one of the intermediate remodelings. This house had had several redos besides the main one of 1900. One of the most interesting things you can't see anymore because underneath the tin ceiling out here is wallpaper from the 1870s or 1880s in the Japanese type of aesthetic taste. But we uncovered that when we uh, redid some of the ceilings. But we do have some pieces of that wallpaper that are in that display case over there. One of the pieces of Victorian furniture that has been donated is this large easy chair. The Victorians were interested in very comfortable furniture, and this is certainly comfortable, heavy upholstery, but this is dating from probably about 1875 or 1880s. The other group of things that are here now on kind of a temporary loan are the perfume collections. These belong to a lo local collector, Lori Emmons, who has loaned this to uh, us to display part of her perfume collection. Sometimes the house has various collections that are on display for a limited period of time, but this one has just been here for a few weeks. The, uh, again, the window treatment, the arches around the windows all date from the earlier 1850 period, original period of the house. They were false grained, meaning they were painted to give a different type of look. They tried to imitate walnut, in some cases, rosewood, but they are the original 1850 windows. Again, the ceilings are from the 1900 restoration. We examine the paint colors, and they have a special glazing of kind of a gold and the colors that match the ceilings. The walls are a type of a, of a canvas, almost like a, a burlap wall, wall covering. The uh, bookcases have been donated. They were uh, reproductions of the original ones that were here. Also, we have another artwork, a oil painting, Victorian oil painting on canvas, and another later oriental rug that we were using temporarily. OK, if you want to go into the dining room, I'll talk about some of the things in there that are of interest. This is the dining room. And actually, in the original house, it was a dining room too, but it has been greatly changed. When the house was redone in the early 1900s, all of this woodwork was added. Also at that time, there was a fireplace that is no longer here that was removed several decades ago that we may replace. When the uh, house was redone, the style of the interior was changed extensively in terms of the colonial revival. Also, the furniture styles were changed. They get, did not use the Victorian type things, the arts and crafts or the art nouveau but they went for more of neoclassical English furniture. They used Duncan Fife pieces, Heppelwhite. This is a Heppelwhite dining room set. Again, this is slightly later than the house, but the style is very similar to what was here earlier. This is probably from the 1920s or 30s. The shield back chairs, which have the Prince of Wales feather in the back of them, a style that was popular from 18th century England on through the 19th and really continues into the, into the 20th century, even now. It has the matching buffet. One interesting feature about this room, the uh, little like china cabinet closet there used to be a door that went into the library. But that was changed years ago, and it was turned into a china cabinet. 
and some of the original family china from probably the 1930s is in there. That was donated. It's the Copeland Spode china. The plates are mainly English that are around the room. They had plate racks, which was a good plate waste to, way to display what you had. Most of these, I say, are, are English. They're transferware. Some are hand-painted. They date all the way from 1820s to probably 1900, 1910. The chandelier in the center is quite interesting. It, again, it is not original to this house. It came originally from a Victorian mansion in Durand, which apparently was demolished a long time ago. That chandelier in pieces ended up in a more or less junk store in, at that time, North Lansing, when everything here was called North Lansing. And Blanche Cogan, who was a local historian in East Lansing, bought it in the 1940s in pieces, had it reconstructed and used in her historic home on a Hagedorn Road in East Lansing for many, many years. Eventually, the uh, friends acquired it and waited for several years before they did the restoration, before they actually put it back together again. It's silver over copper, so and it's very, very ornate with great design, and we have replaced the uh, crystal lights on it, which were not were not the originals, but they were similar to the original. But this is one of the major pieces in this room is the antique chandelier. And fit it in with the theme and the uh, period and also the grape, the grape design that's made of silver. All right, you want to go to the, uh, I guess that's it, you want to go to the living room? This is now called the music room. In the original 1850 house, it was two bedrooms, so there would have been a wall that separated this room. When the house was remodeled in the early 1900s, they removed that wall and they turned this into one large music room. Many members of the family were extremely musical, so this is one of the reasons why they had uh, this music room. You can see the difference in the windows between the almost full length here and the shorter one there, because that is where they had the grand piano. This is an antique grand piano from about 1890 to 1900, so this is authentic to the period of the house. The interior, as I said before, was totally redone. This is a very neoclassical Adams-style fireplace in the white paint, which was typical of that time. They didn't no longer use the natural painted wood, but they wanted white for the type of Adams-style. It's very much an Adams-style fireplace. Furniture in here dates from several different periods and different styles. Many pieces are actually Victorian. The large chair there with oval back medallion chair, the small chair there are Victorian. They're from about 1850 to 1860. This is a Victorian style settee, which is not from that time, but it does match them and uh, is similar in style of the, really the Civil War period. Other musical items in the room, we were uh, given a phonograph several years ago, crank type phonograph which we still use, a Vic Victrola from the Victor talking machine. There. And they have all the old records that go with it. There are many family photos and portraits in this room from the Turners and the Dodges. This is Mrs. Uh, Turner. These are a type of a reproduction photo that look like oil paintings, but they're copied from the originals. They're actually real family photos on the mantelpiece, and the other portrait down there is of uh, Frank Dodge's mother. One of the most interesting things in the, this room or any of the other rooms is the engraving over there. This is one of the few pieces that was actually from this house, was in that exact same place a hundred years ago. It's a type of scene similar to Colonial Williamsburg, showing the uh, people on the front porch of a very classical type house, very similar to this house. And it's interesting because it's been returned to us, and it was located on that very wall where it was before. 
it's also interesting because this, the, both sides of the family have a, connections with the abolitionist movement back in the 19th century. And as you can see, this is very much a scene of the old South enslaved days. And it's interesting to combine these two different thoughts going on at the same time. But they may have chosen it more for the architecture, which is similar to actually the front of this house, than for what the scene was all about or what it was saying. There are other pieces of furniture in the room, some of the marble top pieces, some of these Victorian style chairs. The sofa there is very much in the neoclassical Duncan Fife style, which would have been similar to what the family would have used in the early 1900s when they used that type of furniture. The carpeting in here is an example of roll carpeting, which you could buy in strips and then add it together. This is why it was uh, something that was able to be added onto and change the actual shape of it. The chandeliers in here are slightly different. They're based on old gas lights that are brass. And the uh, window treatments have been copied from authentic window treatments, too, of the time. When the restoration work was going on, they discovered what the original wall treatments were like. And this square over here shows that underneath this, this was what they discovered how it was done with the type of a texture graining. And this is what has been duplicated. It had been covered over years by other paint. But when the uh, paint samplings were taken, they found out that's what was underneath it. And this is what they've used to restore the type of texture in these rooms, which again is not very Victorian when we think of Victorian, but it's completely different. It's a neoclassical or a colonial revival. The colors are much lighter and much different than the earlier bright, bright colors. The last place I want to talk to just one or two things about is the back entrance hall here, which again is a part of the original house, but it was redone. When the exterior was changed, the port cochere was added. Many people who came here came by horse and carriage, and they, that's where they got off and came in the back way. They didn't walk around the house and come in the front, but they came in that way. So this is why this was another important part of the house. <coughs> Purchased a authentic. Go ahead and start okay. over with the back here. In the back hall, we have uh, added an authentic Victorian cranberry and solid brass chandelier light fixture, which dates from about 1890 to 1900, which would have been very similar to what was here years ago. Also, one of the few examples of wallpaper that we have used in the house is a period wallpaper from Bradbury and Bradbury of California. And this blends in very much with the same type of colors that were used in the other rooms. Again, the woodwork, all the same type of thing that was carried throughout the house. And this would have been, again, part of the original house that was redone in the early 1900s then. There. Very good. One second. One of the most interesting survivals in this house is uh, the butler's pantry. As I said, this was the dining room, and the original kitchen of the house was in the basement. So when they added on this other kitchen, they still used the butler's pantry. And that's where they kept a lot of the dishes and a lot of the things that they used every day with the various maids to use. So if you want to look at some of these things, we have arranged this as a small museum on which there are various measuring scoops, bottles, canning jars, all these implements now that are interesting to know how people actually cooked and used things during the Victorian times, 19th century, and whatever. One of the more interesting things in this room is the warming table, which is a combination. There's actually like a heating radiator down below, but this is what they put the plates on to keep them warm while they were serving, because they would come from the kitchen into the dining room and they kept the dishes warmed on. This is all solid copper, and this is original to the house too. It's been restored now, but this is part of the original uh, furnishings of the house. We have some sets of china, from the family. We have other things that have been uh, donated. We have produced a uh, mush list of things that we have uh, been looking for for the house. 
and anyone is welcome to come in and look at this sometimes. We're looking for certain pieces of furniture, other things that can be used in decorating, completing the house. We've done a lot with the interior, but we still have a lot to do with the furnishings. So there are many things in here, such as pieces of furniture, other things that people may be interested in donating, or they may have resources to attain them for the house. So I would invite people to come and look at this, and to come in and look at the house and view all these things on their own so they can really see what they look like. Mm -hmm.